is. I've got my Girl Scout logo. Now what I'd like to do is turn Sketch 1 back on again. And I'd actually like to open a sketch on the face of my mold here. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to grab that and notice it turns bright blue. And over here I've got the shortcut for Sketch. Again, if this little shortcut bar does not come up, then you can go up to the top and tell it Sketch uh, and open up one there. In fact, I lost my shortcut bar, so let's do that. Sketch. Now I've opened up a sketch plane on this face. So I can draw on there. And I'm going to come over and pick on my boss extrude here and actually shut him off. And I'm going to go to normal again. Because what I want to do now is I want to get this inside line here kind of pick up some of this detailing and I'm going to have to take some artistic liberty some license because as you can see this line this edge comes down here and actually gets into where my draft puts the result of my uh, uh, drafting and extruding that so I'm going to come down a, a touch further And I may actually have to bend this around that corner a little bit. That's okay. It's my mold and I can do what I want to it. Start to pooch him out a little bit there. And here I think I'll just continue to wrap it myself. Because I don't have any real sharp corners there. I think I'll just be just as well off running my own corners. came down to a sharp spot. Okay, so I'm just going to double click down there and leave it sharp in the bottom. And agree to that. Let's see now, where did that boss go? If I click on that boss and just kind of wave my mouse over it, I can see it turn orange on my screen. Let's see what the result. If I click on it, it turns blue, so what I'm looking for is areas inside here where, you know, how, how far can I get inside this for my offset. So back to spline. I like it when it turns orange. That means I'm right on top of my other control point. Got to go from memory a little bit here. That's fine. Don't want it too thin in this area. And notice I'm not getting too excited about how my... See, right on my cursor that spline is really kind of curving around sometimes. Um, I'm almost ignoring what the curve looks like right at my cursor uh, because until I click and then start pulling in the next direction I'm not getting an accurate reading for what that spline is doing I wonder if I can come over here and open up and wave my cursor over it no not so much 
I thought maybe I could get this guy to show up. Oh, there he comes. I click on him. Then I got my blue result of my extrusion. This gives me a little guidance. And naturally, as soon as I click over here, then he disappears. And double click on that nice orange dot. Agree to it. And this could be a little shallower, so I'm just going to grab this control point, tug it around a little bit. This is a little bit needs a little smoothing in here. There. And if I pick on my boss, I probably stayed a little further away from this corner than I needed to, so no problem. I just grab my control points, bring them in a little tighter. There. Yeah. I like that. This one's maybe even still a little bit tight. Yeah, that's going to work. Check out this other corner. Yeah, it needs a little attention in there, so I'm going to grab him, drag down until I like the result. Let him go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Got my spline where I want it. So I'm going to agree to this sketch. And I'm going to shut off sketch one again. Just so I can see what I'm up to here. I'm going to turn back on my boss extrusion. He was always there, but he was just hidden. And now, by clicking over here in my history tree, if I grab sketch three and go to features, extruded, extruded cut. I'm going to come back down into my mold I want to go uh, 100 thousandths of an inch, so I'm just going to put 100 thou in here. Be sure to draft it. Let's make sure that drafted in the correct direction. So I may have to turn on normal here. I'll turn on normal. And I think I got the correct direction going, so let's find out. Okay, just to make sure I got my draft going the correct way, I'm going to, uh, let's take a look at it from the bottom. And let's turn it into hidden line view. And see if we can tell. This looks like our draft angles are going the correct way. So once again, our, our plastic needs to be able to pull off the top of this guy. Okay, now we're going to throw a little bit of lettering on this. So, to do that, I'm going to come up here to this letter A. And for my text, I just want a capital G. And I don't want to use document font. I want to go get my own font. So, if I hit this font button, it gives me a selection here. And today I'm going to use Comic Sans MS. I think Bold Oblique looks kind of nice. And I'm going to try about uh, one inch tall lettering and just see what that does. And it puts it right in here. In a moment here you're going to notice uh, when I pick on this, notice where the origin is currently and where the lettering is. Now I'm just going to grab this letter and 
Uh, he's pretty much there. Sketch text. I'll agree to the letter. <laughs> and he moved it. What was that little blue dot? That's how I tell my computer where the text actually is. I'm going to bring him up into place here. And I can just drag him around until it looks right. Uh, I don't quite like how big it is. I think I can get bigger. So if I double click on him and go back to this font, uh, let's try 1.25 and see if that... Okay, that might work. That, that may be too big. We'll find out. Oh yeah, agree to it, sorry. And then you can drag. <laughs> Maybe you can. There. Get over there. Notice my cursor has turned into an A there. Alright, now let's give another A and let's do a capital S. And clear document font. Comic Sans, Bold Oblique. Uh, let's try an inch and a quarter. Agree to him and pull him into place here. Looks like I'm a little bit big and don't think I'm going to be able to get it to fit. So let's back him back down to. Uh, Let's try one inch even again. That has a better chance of fitting. Well, I'm on this screen. Wherever I click is going to be... Notice where my cursor is. Okay, so I have my cursor here. If I pick there, that's where it's going to put that little blue dot. That's going to position my letter. If I get off of sketch text, agree to it, now when I pick, I'm picking either the face or I'm picking my lettering. If I pick my lettering, now I can actually budge, I can move it around just by dragging my mouse. So let's double click on this guy. Font. We'll back him back down to an inch also. Agree to him and budge him into place. Hopefully. Now at this point, I probably want to go back to my uh, image and say, now, what was my inspiration again here? This particular inspiration would be the lid to that tin cup. So let's go back to that tin cup and see what it looks like. All right, so I'm back looking at my tin cup. It doesn't look like quite the font I chose. This looks a little more uh, Times New Roman or maybe a bank gothic of some sort. Again, a little bit different look at the emblem again. Just going back to some of my original inspiration. Am I achieving what I wanted on my inspiration? And I believe I am. Alright, so now that I have my letters about where I want them, I want to make sure they're on the same horizontal line across the bottom here. And I'm not convinced in my mind that they are. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick on this point, and then hold down Control and pick on this point, and I'm going to make them a horizontal relation. When I do that, yeah, my S moved up ever so slightly. And now they're on a, a nice line underneath them. So that tidied that up a little bit. And now, because I don't want them moving around when I extrude them, uh, I better, uh, better fix them in place here. So a good way to do that is grab Smart Dimension. I'll just grab this in here, come down to my origin, pick on my origin. I don't really want a uh, angular dimension here. I, I want uh, this one. It's horizontal. And I like where it's at, so I'm going to leave it. I'm gonna pick on this point again. 
come down pick on my origin again and then this is all based on where your mouse is at see it's 1.86 until I bring my mouse over here and then it turns into 1.60 and I like where that dimensions at someone's gonna agree to him there now if I needed to move those for some reason, let's say I wanted to bump it up to kind of fill in this space a little bit, I can just get in here and double click on this dimension. Let's make that 1.8. And now I moved it up, it filled this little area, but my S now interferes over here. And so maybe that wasn't such a great move. Now my choices are I can remove this relation here and move the S down all by itself or simply just say okay edit undo <laughs> sketch moving back down here and we'll all be fine yeah let's agree to that sketch and i think we have it okay now to finish up this logo what i'm going to do is click on the sketch four highlight it come up to features and again extrude those those features are going to extrude up out of the surface now if the arrow is going the right way. If not, reverse the direction over here. I want it to come up blind and I want it to be 80 thousandths of an inch with 3 degrees of draft. And we'll agree to that. So there's the result. Now to get a little bit or more realistic view of what this looks like, I'm going to actually uh, shut off my... I'm going to hide the view of that lettering. There, that gives me a little bit better feel for what's going on there. And now we have a complete Girl Scout logo ready to be sent to the machine shop.